Hello and welcome. My name is Jennifer Long. I'm a modern ragdoll designer and quilt pattern designer, and my label is Be So Inspired. So, so happy to have you here. And today we are going to talk um, and actually sew together in real time, in real speed, uh, the frog fell to doll. So we're going to do one doll today. This is the cute little doll we're going to do today. She is like a paper doll. She's very, very thin, but she's made out of felt and she has stabilizer in her. So her head is not going to, like, see how nice and stiff she is there, but super thin and light. Her head is not going to fall off. And her clothes, this is her skirt that comes with the pattern, and it just sticks onto her like felt on felt. So um, when I was growing up, I used to play paper dolls with my sister all of the time, but then the heads would crumple and their arms would crumple and fall off. And so this is my solution to on-the-go play is felt dolls. So happy to have you here. Things you need. So there's an embroidery pattern. It's the Beach Day Frog Felt Pattern, and it's um, on my website, beseoinspired.com. If you head over to ThermoWeb's website or to Benzi Felt's website, I blogged for both of them um, this same week, and there are codes at both of those uh, sites to get the pattern for free. So you can head over to their site and follow the links to get the pattern for free. You can also head over to my website and grab it as well. Once you have this uh, pattern, you'll load it up onto your embroidery machine in the file that you need, and there is a PDF step sheet. So you'll want to print that out you know, you can follow it along on your machine, but it's kind of nice because it tells you where to trim. We're going to do it together. So I like to have that step sheet. It's just a one sheet to print out. So you know what's coming up next. You can have that over to the side and you can have some felt and we need a few things. So let's go through our supply list. I'm going to turn you over a little bit here and show you my desk. And we're going to go through what we have for supplies. So I have my embroidery hoop. You need at least um, a five by seven hoop. This is a little bit larger, it's a six by 10 hoop, but you only need a five by seven hoop to do these felt dolls. And you're gonna hoop it with a cut away stabilizer. That is gonna actually stay inside the center of your doll. The, um, some of the beautiful things that we're going to use that is gonna make this doll even a little bit stronger is this wonderful product here. It's uh, called Craft Extra Firm. Um, heat and bond and fusible interfacing. So you can fuse it or you do not need to fuse it, but I'm going to show you how to use it. So this is it from a bolt because <laughs> I use a lot of it and that's what it looks like in the package. You need a few felt colors. So I have a few of uh, my Benzie beautiful wool blend felt. Love this felt. And then I have some embroidery colors as well. So I usually use big spools, but I'm going to use some small spools just for us today. And I have my step sheet. And oh, I can't forget this because this makes your life so much easier is this spray and bond adhesive spray. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use that in a minute. But first, we're going to turn you towards the embroidery machine. So I'm going to use just my domestic home machine for this so that anybody can do this at home if they have an embroidery machine. And I have her right now loaded up on we're going to do the froggette doll. I have her loaded up and we're going to do step one. So step one is just her outline. So I'm gonna use my green thread and I am gonna just start her outline. While she's outlining, I'm going to grab my bottom thread that I'm, or my bottom felt that I'm going to use for her main body. I'm gonna use this color for her main body. So this is the color that I would like to get and this is the one um, that we're gonna use here. And you'll also be grabbing your spray and bond adhesive here. So she is just outlining. We're going to let her keep continuing to do that. All the way around and I'll show you what she looks like. Excellent. I'll make sure I have a pair of scissors close by. So I normally I wouldn't take her out of the hoop every time, but just so that you can see, I'm going to take her out of the hoop. So that is her outline. Just for this position, we're going to see um, what, what we're going to do here. So I'm going to measure. This is her outline. I know exactly where she is on the hoop. So these are called placement steps. When you're embroidering, then you don't have to do a lot of wasted um, fabric and 
space. So I want to get a little bit bigger than how her line is here. So I'm going to measure this as a six and a half inch ruler and I definitely want at least six and a half, but I only need to use, oh, four and a half, six and a half by four and a half. So I'm going to take my um, lime green Benzie felt here. So I did I say four and a half by six and a half. I'm just going to be a little more generous than that because the last thing you want is to be um, too low, too little. And I'm going to cut that and I'm going to place that right over the placement line. But here is the magic trick. So two things are happening here. So I want this piece to come on here and I'm going to use this to stick it on there. But before you do that, this is where this comes in. So this is where lots of people think they can just miss this step, but her head is going to get floppy if you don't use anything in there. This is such, such, such thin, thin, thin um, stabilizer. It's wonderful. Um, and you can even fuse it to your hoop if you like. So I'm going to do that same size. Six and a half by four and a half. <laughs> Where's my ruler there? But don't miss this step because this is going to give that extra strength. You don't need this in the clothing of your dolls. You only need this in the doll part of your dolls. So this has a shiny side. I don't know if that's reading on the camera or not. And then kind of a back uh, front side. So I'm going to cover this doll completely with it first. If I had my iron over here, I would use the iron. But I have this wonderful... Um, basting adhesive here that's just a temporary bond and I'm going to spray the whole little frog at shape and I'm going to stick this and then there's going to be no chance of it shifting or moving in the hoop. Before I do the next tack down stitch I'm going to do the same thing and place that felt right over her and there we go. So it's nice and flat there's no movement upside down <laughs> and we'll come back to the embroidery machine. Great. So I'll put that in there and we will do the second stitch out. So this is a tack down step. Right, so it says use a coordinating thread color. So I am the same kind of the same color of thread color there. And use your extra firm interfacing and main body fabric felt, so that's what I'm using, face up over the entire placement stitch. Stitch out the tack down step. So that's exactly what we're doing here. Good. Have you ever done projects in the hoop before? You can tell me in the comments here. I'd be really interested to know if this is your first in the hoop project or if you've done them before, if you've made dolls in the hoop before, if you're new to embroidery machine, or if you're just watching considering getting a machine, if you haven't bought a machine yet, it's really nice to have a hoop that's five by seven as a minimum. So if you have something that's a five by seven at a minimum, that's your tack down step. So even your children can help you do this. It's so fun and um, easy. Placement steps. So that's the next step. You can use the same color for that. And this is just going to show you where the next piece is. So just like that first placement step that we had, where it showed us where to place the body fabric, this is going to show us where the second bit of fabric is going to go. And I'll take this out of the hoop and show you again. Great. So I'll show you what she's looking like. I'll just cut these at the back. It's kind of nice to keep this uh, thread the back short anyways. Excellent. So here she is. It did the whole outline of her. And the second placement stitch is just for this tummy and it goes up to her chin. Good. So we are going to do the same thing that we just did before and measure this. I'm just gonna snip this thread because we don't want all these extra threads in there. So I'm going to measure this new placement stitch with a maybe at least a good solid one quarter inch all the way around, if not a little bit more. So I'm gonna give it three by two and a half. And my little froggit is gonna have a darker piece on the inside. So I'll do three by two and a half. And I'm gonna cut that out. Good. I like cutting it with my rotary cutter here because then it leaves my felt, in, you know, not all bumpy and, and odd shapes. And it's just much easier to continue to use this beautiful wool felt, continue to keep using that for next projects. So I'm just going to check that that covers that whole space, and it does. 
And I'll do the same thing here. So I'm gonna spray on the back of that. And just make sure you're covering all the way around. Excellent. We'll come back over to the machine. So now we are going on to, this is step four. Sorry, I'm having, I won't keep twisting you back and forth. Once we're here for a while, we're gonna stay there, but we need to do a bit of trimming. Okay, so I want a slightly different color for the body since the body color is a little darker. And this is a single thread machine, so I'm just gonna quickly thread. If you do a lot of sewing and embroidery, and even with these needle threaders now, it's quite quick to change your colors. Excellent. So here we go, and we'll stitch out the next step. So this is just a tack down step. It's not a triple stitch yet, it's just a tack down step. Good. Using our applique scissors, we are going to trim that round. Cut it back. I'll see if I can do it here so I'm not moving you around too much. And I'll get you nice and close. Perfect. Good. So I have a curved pair of applique scissors. These come in super handy. Um, I have a couple of different sized ones, and I try to get as close to the edge as you can. Now you really only need to cut where the frog, the frogette is um, attached to her limbs. You don't need to cut the whole thing, but I'm going to just so that you can see. You want to cut as close as you possibly can without snipping um, the seam that you just made. And sometimes it happens, and if it happens, you can just go back and press uh, go back one step and re-sew that step and see if you can try and catch it again. Especially around the neck and stuff right here. Oh, and if you're not doing it on the table, ah, it gets a little harder. So this is what she looks like there. So if you're using a nice pair of curved applique scissors, then you're going to get a nice, even, beautiful straight line. Excellent. All right. So the next step is, I think it's the triple stitch here. I'll grab my step sheet in a second. I'll get this going because we're doing this live. Oh yeah. So the next step is a triple stitch here. So it's just gonna tap that down so that it stays triple stitch down all the way around. After this stitch out, we are gonna move on to the frog detail step. So her details would be things like her feet, she has little, I'm going to show you here. She has these little arm and little webbed feet and hands. So you can do that. I'm going to keep this accent color, so the same color that I have for this, this part of the skin here. I'm going to keep that color for this next step. So I'm going to just press next step, and away it goes. I'm going to clip that thread so it doesn't get caught. These are just short little stitches. If you're having any kind of trouble with your machine or it's an older machine, you can always slow your speed down as well. I'm just showing you all these close-up of all these little details that are happening. It's gonna take a little bit there and we're just gonna walk working. Let's get prepared for our next step. So the next step is gonna be the eyes, it says. So I'm gonna make sure I have my next colors out. While this is stitching out, let's talk about the other accessories that come. So she has a little skirt, and it's done in a very similar way, like I said, but it does not have the stiffener in it, so it's a little more flexible. You can just stick it onto the doll, felt on felt. If you really, really want a nice um, adhesive there, or way to stick, you can put the hook ends of a tiny piece of Velcro there, and it'll grab nicely. So that is up to you at the end. Sometimes I stitch them on by hand, just catching that back layer. Sometimes I hot glue them depending on the age of the child that's gonna be playing with it. If it's hot glued, it can be ripped off, and so then it could become a choking hazard there. So just be aware of that for your age of your child. We're almost done the feet detail, and we're gonna move on to the eyelashes. So she has these luscious eyelashes. 
there you go. And I'm gonna use black again for them. We have three more to go with that. Maybe I'll pull you in even closer so you can see what's happening. So again, this is just my single needle um, domestic sewing machine, that churn embroidery machine. Perfect, and it's telling us we want the next color. Excellent. So our next color is black for the eye, so I'm gonna switch that around. So in the comments here, can you tell me um, what your favorite paper doll was growing up? I'd be really interested to know. Oh, it's, this is tangled around here. I'd be really interested to know what your favorite paper doll was. My sister and I had, like I said, we had tons of them. And um, which ones did I love? I really liked the princess ones. I think we had these ones that were mice that were dressed up like farm mice. Really, really liked those ones, I remember. Yeah, those are fun. So because you're using a thick felt, like it's a felt and you've got some stabilizer, you can um, keep your white bobbin thread at the bottom here. If you are using something really thin, sometimes I like to change my bobbin at this step to a black bobbin thread and then you won't see any the white come out at all and so that's a preference and that's depending on the tension of your machine and everything but um, embroidering on felt is so beautiful that um, you shouldn't have any of that those issues this also does a triple stitch around each eyelash or a little stitch so that it's sort of holding all those stitches together and covers up any edges that you might have Good. after the eyelash step we're going on to the cheek details. He has these cute little round pink cheeks. <laughs> I usually have rosy cheeks as well. <laughs> so we'll make our froggette with rosy cheeks. I'll pull that one out. So it really is um, quite simple and fun. You can do this together with your grandchild or with your child. You can make a couple of them at once, make them for party favors, for gifts. Um, for birthday parties. Oh, this one didn't cut. Sometimes my cutter doesn't work. Does that ever happen to you on your embroidery machine? Oh, there you go. See, I knew that if I held it long enough, it would cut on its own. Sometimes if your cutter isn't working, it's just not clean in there, so you can carefully open up your machine and give it a little cleaning. But I see how some threads wrapped around the edges. She's coming along. <laughs> and after this step, then we have her nose and belly button. So I'm gonna go back to the darker green, the same as her tummy there. I have her reverses from when I have this um, bra yet. So I have the lighter on her tummy and the darker here. And I wanted to try it the opposite way here and see which one I prefer. <laughs> So let's try that. So because this is going to be embroidering on the lighter color, I'm going to use a darker green. This is the nose and her belly button detail. Her two little nostrils so she can breathe when she's swimming at the beach. <laughs> right, so we were talking about what your favorite paper doll is. I also always uh, have a little garbage can nearby and all these extras I just sort of toss into the side and at the end, I make sure I can find them all again. <laughs> um, your favorite paper doll when you were a child. Yes, so I like these little farm mice that we had and they had all kinds of clothes that went with them. They might have even had like pumpkins and different stuff they could grow in the garden too. The next is the lips and I'm gonna use a really uh, fuchsia color here. <laughs> What's well, called berry, new berry. Mm. So we're going to use a new berry color for her lips. Part of the fun of um, embroidering on your home embroidery machine and changing each color as you go is you can kind of see, um, you know, maybe you want to change this to a slightly different pink after you see her coming together. And so that's sort of like the beauty of you know, playing with colors and going a little slower than you would on a multi-needle. 
but you certainly can do it on a multi needle. And you can just um, choose your colors as you're going here. Let's gonna stitch out her lips. I'm gonna keep this color in because her bikini, I'm actually gonna have a very similar color, this berry color, this fancy color, berry color. So now this is called, again, the placement step. So we do this without doing anything else, and it's just gonna show me where exactly I place the felt so that we know how big and how, uh, where to place it. So she's wearing a little bikini, kind of like a, nod to like 1950s bikini because it's got a little sort of a skirt on it. It's got polka dots on it. Maybe like vintage made modern. <laughs> Good. I'll take her out and show you what's happening. Oh, she is going to be fancy. One fancy frog yet. So here she is. So it's showed us the placement for her bikini. Good. And I'm going to do the same thing that I've been doing. Just make sure I have a clear space so I don't cut any of my felt. And this piece, I want to make sure I catch the flare. I'm going to do it two and a half by two for sure. Oh, dropped that on the ground. And again, I really like cutting this out ahead of, um, like with my rotary cutter like this, so that I have nice pieces of felt left. I will spray the back of this bikini piece and then I don't have to worry about it moving at all. Good, it's nice and stuck. And we're gonna put her back in the hoop. I'm gonna grab onto my thread. And then it cuts it nicely. Make sure there's tension there. Good. <laughs> You can see my floor and everything here, yes. So I'm standing here. I actually have this. I, I should do a walkthrough of my sewing room. This is a new studio this year. And we turned our garage into a sewing studio. And this is actually a really tall, almost counter height dresser. And I love it for embroidery. So I don't know if you sit at your embroidery machine or not, but I actually like standing. I've got multiple machines going here too, I guess. And then I have my table so I can take things out and cut them. So, um, I'm not sure if you how yours is set up. Love to hear how you have yours set up in your house, or if you um, just take the unit on and off. Don't do too much embroidery, and you just take the unit on and off as you need. It. Here's a little peek as I have all my embroidery threads in the drawers of it, so it's pretty fun. I will do a tour one day. <laughs> so here we go. We done the triple stitch. We've done the triple stitch around here and we're gonna start the trimming. So I'm gonna bring you closer and this is a little bit more um, involved. So I'm gonna bring it nice and close. Good. And when I'm trimming, so again, I have my nice curved embroidery scissors and I'm gonna really pull it back so I know that that's exactly where I want, just using tiny little snips and the tip of the scissor cut along while I'm holding it there. I'm gonna go all the way around the perimeter of her first. And then I'm gonna get into that tricky spot on her belly and we're gonna talk about that. So you just, if you keep pulling a little bit of tension on this, I'm gonna go maybe, how can I do it like this so you can see? Keep pulling tension on that piece. Then you get this nice, really tight straight line. So I'm just gonna gather my uh, curved scissor inside there and just again, do little tiny snips along one side There we go, we're coming. <laughs> it's coming. Good, so that's probably the trickiest part of the whole procedure right there. And you did it, yay. And then you can cut along the other side. You can clean it up. What you, do want, you don't wanna do is dig down too deep. That's what I was nervous about doing there and catching the green felt because we want her tummy fabric to show. So I'm just gonna keep doing little snips until I cut through and keep cleaning it up. Good. Okay. 
<laughs> so yeah, there's still some fuzz there. I might have a piece of masking tape and see if I can catch some of that. It's another little trick to grab. And there we go. Just get all the little fibers without going deep. I mean, I might have been able to get them on the first round. Now I can see her belly button, but um, I didn't want to risk cutting through, you know, multiple layers of felt. So if you just take it easy and slow, you'll eventually get down there. Good. So I'll keep working on that, but that's what she looks like so far. Oh, she's cute, cute, cute. The next thing is the polka dots on her bikini. Let's turn her back over here and I'm going to do a light pink, light pink polka dots. So the same color as her cheek on this bikini. And then while the polka dots are going, we are going to talk about the backing of her. So that's the sort of the last and final steps of this. And um, it's kind of a secret to making felt dolls in the hoops. So we'll get that going. There goes the polka dots. So the backing of her is I like to use a white felt on all the backs of all my felt dolls, including their clothing. So if you see, this is her skirt, and then the back is white. And then if I put a piece of white Velcro there, it looks fine. The, my, um, then I can keep a white bobbin as well. This is my boy frog doll, and then this is the back of him. You can kind of see some of the outline coming through. Um, but there is a white bobbin thread in there. And I just think it looks the cleanest. And they're like a paper doll. You know, you've never had color on the back of your paper doll. And so I am completely okay with that. If you wanted to make them green, I would suggest putting green in your bobbin. Then so you had it. But this way I have everything is backed with white. So I have a much larger piece of white. And we're going to talk about what to do so that it floats on the back. We always want to make sure we get through all of her stitches first because all of these stitches, oh, I can see that my machine is getting a little knotted in there. My cutter needs cleaning. I should have cleaned it before this video. So the backing here, we want to get all of these stitches inside before we move on. While it's stitching, let's have a talk, shall we? <laughs> okay, it's going to be a little bit while to do those polka dots. So, good. So, this is the first in a monthly series of felt dolls. Um, felt dolls are, as you can see, we're almost done this doll. So, felt dolls are a quick way. Um, they're relatively inexpensive. Once you get set up with a few things, like once you get, um, you know, this is what, one yard by 20 inches, that can do quite a few dolls. And you get this, and you get a few pieces of your felt that you're doing. Um, you're good to go for a while. So we are going to do a new release, a new pattern release. We're actually going to do an embroidery machine one and a hand sewing one as well every month. It's super exciting. So this is the launch month here, and these are the frog felt dolls. I'm so happy that you can do, see them. They come with accessories. So like you saw the skirt and the tank top, the skirt is for the girl, the tank top is for the boy frog, or you can interchange them however you want. You can make them in many different colors and you, they can have many different items for that same doll. They also have a cute little beach umbrella and a beach ball because you can't go to the beach without a little beach ball. So it's really, really cute. The beach ball has, I don't know if it's reading through there, has some wonderful, great little details, a different kind of a stitch on all of the um, parts of the beach ball. and. The, this is a lot of applique on the beach umbrella, so it's pretty fun. We're working through, we're almost uh, <laughs> almost through all those polka dots, so that's really fun. So the only thing is when you are going to be doing your doll at the end, it's not going to just do one perimeter around the whole doll, or you're going to have just one color, it's going to bleed through everything, it's not going to look really great. So how I design them? is that the backing step, we'll do one thing before the backing step, and the backing step is actually a series of steps. And it's everywhere that's a color of the top you change. So for her, I would put my black thread again, and it would just do the outline of the part on the outside, but not on her inner legs or her neck or anything. 
So that really just stitches just to hold the sandwich together. Then we would have the two different greens. So on the Spraget doll, there's three steps to the back of the step. Good. At the end of this, I will show uh, pictures from before and after so you can see some different ideas. And I'd love you to post um, an Inspired Doll Making Facebook group. I'd love you to post all of your frog, frog, Froggette dolls that you're making. I'd love you to post them on social media. If you tag me, if you use the at Be So Inspired, and it's B E E S E W, and then Inspired, I N S P I R E D, then I'll be able to see it for sure, and I can uh, share it as well and tag you back. So perfect. Here we go. So she has been completely sewn at the front. <laughs> I don't know, but we'll think about what if I like the darker uh, the darker chin or the lighter chin. <laughs> it's okay though. So it's good to experiment and we'll have lots of different kinds of frogs. Maybe she's a toad, right? <laughs> okay, so let's come down here and um, I'll show you what to do with the back. So at the back, you know, it doesn't have to be totally clean, but I am gonna use, again, these are like a flat duckbill scissor, and I'm gonna cut all of these extra threads out. Because especially the darker colors or the green, you don't want them um, showing through if you're gonna use a white background. If you're using something darker like a black, you won't necessarily see them, but you know, you could have them sticking out on the edges when you cut her, so cut her up at the final step. So we're going to do the same thing we did at the beginning. If we remember our measure, measurements, they should stay the same. Is we're doing six and a half by a four and a half. And so I'm going to do her backing in white. And I'm going to cut just a little bit more generous than that because it's for the back. Although it should be the same. I just like to be a little generous after all that work. I'm going to spray her on the back again here. So there's no going to be no movement happening and the back is on. It's nice and flat. I'm not going to push too hard because of the kind of hoop I have here. Great. And then she's way to go. So now this is called floating on the back and it's really actually quite stuck. So that's really nice. Oh, here we go. It's really quite stuck. So that's nice. So it shouldn't shift around at all, but you do want to be careful when you slide it back into your hoop that you don't have something bent over like this because it can get caught on her seam. So what, because I've been playing with that so much, I think I might actually tack that down a little bit further and just make sure that we don't have, we don't want anything at the very, very final step. Yeah, that's good to change. So good. So then she's totally covered and we'll flip her. We're going to add her back to the machine and we'll just do the three final steps. The three final steps will be the last, the three colors that you used. When you pull her back out again, you're going to take her out of the hoop and using a straight pair of scissors. So a small straight pair of scissors. I'm going to leave about a one eighth inch and I'm going to cut all the way around her and you will have your belt doll. You can continue the same thing for all of the accessories, although you don't have to do the stabilizer in the accessories. So, so happy that you were able to join us today for this video. Really excited to be here and to start uh, making more homemade toys for the ones we love. So toys on the go, uh, belt dolls. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure that you sign up for um, my doll making newsletter. It's free and it goes out just once a month and there's coupons and tips and new patterns and all kinds of fun stuff. So you can do that at BeSoInspired.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, I'd really appreciate that uh, a follow or a like, subscribe to this channel, that's free as well. And that helps us bring more videos. And if you're watching this on Inspired Doll Making, I'd love to have you comment. If you're watching this on Inspired Doll Making Facebook group, we do have a, uh, uh, surprise, <laughs> which I'll put in the comments in the group there as well. So thank you so very much and have a great day.